there's just amazing people everywhere in the world. You just have to find them. That's the same with the internet, right? And, yes. and I'll, just to give you a precursor, I've been a musician since I was a child. And I stopped playing music because I just couldn't find people who got what I was doing. And now it's like, they're just there. See, that's, yeah. that's dope. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, when you can connect with people who get what you're doing, it's just so <laughs> we, we do, no, I, was like, I gotta say, I gotta say for everyone who hasn't seen your show before, when, when we just connected to have that quick chat, what ended up being almost an hour, I was like, yeah, yeah, this yeah. guy taught, in that time, you taught me so much. I was just, nah, hey. we were talking and about all kinds of things. And I'm like, man, I'm like, why don't you have like a show? You're like, I do. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I, I do. I just try to find people that talk about the same thing I like talking about and let them talk instead. Because uh, I, like I tell everybody, you know, we get to the show. I do some talking, but it's not like the pre-show. You know, pre-show, you're like, dude, I got to go, man. And I was like, you know, I can keep going. You know, I was like. I, I, I loved it. it. I loved it. It was like I, adop it was like I adopted you into my family. I was like, let me drop yes. this knowledge on you. Dude. Let me drop this yes. knowledge on you because you need to be mindful. You know? But I was learning. Not I was learning. Does that. Not everyone does yeah. that, you know, for a stranger. No, we true. met for the first time. And not everyone does yeah, that. Yeah, first time. First time. I respect yeah. it. You're so, you're, so, you're so kind and you're so sweet. You go like, man, I got to go get my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate I hate to go, but I was like, no. For many years, and I've been a band called Artful Vandalays for many years, and I would talk to the guys, I'm like, look, what's wrong with the music industry is that streaming platforms like Spotify and Apple Music, they pay 0 .004 cents per stream, okay? Yes, and right. if a stream is counted at 30 seconds. So if you write a seven-minute masterpiece and people listen to it, like, a lot, it only counts if they listen to 30 seconds. So if you write yeah. a 30 second jam and people listen to it on repeat, you get paid more than that seven minute masterpiece. So the joke was, it's like, look, the people don't know this, that like they think all oh, the music industry is saved. We got Spotify, Apple music, but musicians get paid nothing. Right. So the joke was, Hey, I got to a thousand streams in like three days. That's enough to buy a happy meal for my daughter. I saw that. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yeah. I was going like, Okay, that's some really cool marketing, but also anti-establishment kind of a yes. that, that yes. was kind of cool. What did you learn from your parents? All kinds of things. So um, my parents were there, they're, they're from Sri Lanka. They were born there. They grew up there and they came to Canada as refugees. That's why I'm wearing my red shirt, actually. It's, it's, it's Remembrance oh. Day here in Canada. Oh, it's okay. Right. Yeah, which is like a, a war memorial thing. But at the same time, like Canada did some amazing things in World War One. All I'm saying is I'm really proud to be Canadian because my parents came here as refugees and Canada took us in. Oh. It's amazing. So what I learned from them it, uh, is a lot of things. The good stuff is like resilience, man. It doesn't matter how bad things are, you can work through it. And, you know, they have 10 kids and they never got divorced. There were many times where it, would, it came pretty close and they stuck it out. And that was like a really important lesson I learned from them that, you know what, no matter what the adversity is, and they were so struggling to make ends meet for so many years right and um and after growing up that way one thing i learned was man there's something wrong with the way money is distributed in the world <laughs> that's something i learned right because these people work so hard but they're so broke and um that's one thing i learned from they never taught that to me but i observed that right and, and another thing i learned from them is that like giving of yourself is the most valuable thing you can do they had 10 children and they gave so much to them right they gave their whole lives to their kids and i'm like man i, I wish i could do that like i have one child because of that i saw how much it takes out of a person you know to yes. raise children and so yeah it, it taught me like just be appreciative of everything you have because man like i i feel as much as there's like some terrible things that happen in my life i feel so grateful because there's so many amazing things that happen too and yeah, what they taught me is look on the bright side. And it's a hard lesson to learn, a long lesson to learn. But yeah, I, I learned a lot. But, but in, a lot of, in a lot of your posts that you have, your posts lean toward just that mindset of looking on the bright side. Yes. Uh, we're we're going to delve into some other things that the uh, painful uh, processes that you went through. But I, I do going to, I have a piggyback question to that one. That's mm -hmm. what you learned from your mom and dad. You're, you're, you're one of, 10 children. Yeah. What did you learn from your siblings? Oh, well, hard <laughs> lessons, right? I have three older brothers and man, I was, I must've been an annoying kid. 
but like I recently <laughs> was talking to my siblings and, and my oldest sister, she told me, she's like, you know, when you were 11 and I was 18, you would like walk up and be like, can I help you with your algebra homework? Cause you were so bored, yeah. right? Yeah, and I'm like, oh, I don't remember that. She's like, you don't remember that? You used to help our brother learn how to program. You used to help this guy do this. And I'm like, oh, I thought I was learning from you, <laughs> right? Because I, I thought you were teaching me algebra, algebra right? Because that's how I looked at it. I was just like, you're teaching right. me as much as I'm teaching you. And just like what you said, right? If you look at every human I've ever met is an amazing teacher. You just have to be open to what the wisdom they have is, right? Yeah. It's the openness. So yeah, that's what they taught me is to be I open to wisdom. Even if it doesn't look like Sangeet. That's, that's the name my parents call me when uh, I have, my name is Anton James Sangeet Hygienus. And Sangeet is what they call me at home. And funny enough, Sangeet means music in Sanskrit. And I don't know why they named me that, but um, that's I think what the I things love. that I oh, teach people so. from are difficult experiences that I've gotten through. And unfortunately or fortunately, I've gotten through a lot of ridiculously difficult experiences. Like I was punched in the face trying to stop a fight. I lost two teeth, like all kinds of, I was mugged. You know, we came here as refugees. My grandfather was shot. Like it was like an insane stuff like that, right? And getting through stuff like that, you can see that pain in other people. And you'd be like, you know what I found was helpful? This, this idea that I found, or like, you know, this thing in science or whatever. And just like sharing ideas with people that help me get through these things. So when I recognize, and I, I did this video on Instagram about bleeding geese. It, it's a long story, but you, you can see this video where basically I was on a golf course and I saw this goose that got hit by a golf ball and I, I was frozen. I had to like try to help this goose, right? And everyone was looking at me like, man, did you hit it? Why are you worried about this? I'm like, because it's hurting, man. Kid, someone's got to help it, right? And that's how I feel. I'm like, I've been there. I've been punched in the face and I didn't deserve it. And I, I people help me. And I'm like, I want to be there for you, right? That's 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 what we got to do for each other, right? Like, if we've been through struggles, help each other with their struggles because people deal with pain because of a toxic relationship, because of dealing with a narcissist, be dealing with self-absorbed people, uh, being abused, discarded, treated as if they don't have value, even within their own family. Why is it important to process that pain, and how is it kind of like a computer? Well. You actually helped me a lot with this because this is a realization I had, but you, you explained it to me this way. It's like, you're like saying, it's like, you know, right. we carry our pain on our backs with us, yeah. but there is a way to release it. And what you said is it's writing, you know, other people have talked about journaling. For me, it was writing songs, right? And I don't know if you ever watched Harry Potter. That's another nerd alert, but they have this like thing that Voldemort makes these horcruxes or whatever and puts a piece of a soul. For me, when I had all this pain, I would write a song. And then put all that pain in that song and file it away so I didn't have to carry it around with me anymore. But you can't just remove it. So occasionally I'll just re-listen to that song and be like, oh, yeah, I have to remember that lesson that I learned. Because pain teaches us lessons. And if we don't remember them, so if you just put them out of your mind and never come back to them, you will forget the lessons you learned. Right. And those are painfully learned lessons. You can't forget them. So. Right. That's how I look at it. And the computer analogy is, is similar, where basically in, in a computer they were designed by humans, right? So they, they have this idea of RAM where RAM is what programs and everything that's running, they have to be in that part of the computer. Now there's only so much space in that part of the computer, but there's a hard drive that can store all kinds of things that you can revisit later, right? So that's how I think of it, where it's basically like, if you put that away into your hard drive, file it away in your brain in a place where you can reaccess it in an orderly fashion, then you can deal with your pain better than if you're just carrying it around with you and never find a means or an outlet to get rid of it. And for some people that's writing, for some people that's drawing, some people it's writing songs, for some people it's just talking, right? Just like having conversations. And for me, I do all of it. <laughs> so I, I've gotten, I found a lot of outlets, right? So yeah, the more outlets you have, I think the better equipped you'll be to deal with pain.